one of those rare Sundays when the message actually fits in with what's gone on before. Doesn't happen much, in that. <laughs> happens a lot more with Jana and Chris, people who plan things. But um, uh, the scripture that I want us to use this morning is uh, about the name. <coughs> Uh, Matthew chapter 1, verse 18. This is how the birth of Jesus Christ came about. His mother Mary was pledged to be married to Joseph, and before they came together, she was found to be with child through the Holy Spirit. Because Joseph, her husband, was a righteous man and did not want to expose her or him to public disgrace, he had in mind to divorce her quietly. But after he considered this, an angel of the Lord appeared to him in a dream and said, Joseph, son of David, don't be afraid to take Mary home as your wife. Because what's conceived in her is from the Holy Spirit. She'll give birth to a son, and you are to give him the name Jesus, because he will save his people from their sins. All this took place to fulfill what the Lord had said through the prophet. The virgin will be with child and will give birth to a son, and they, everyone, will call him Emmanuel, which means God with us. So the Lord teaches how you're with us, and how you uh, radically change our life. We look for you at home. Amen. Uh, we all know that there's power in names. You know, when you were growing up, if you were named Frumpy or Dumpy, or like, you know, you kind of live with it. And uh, and uh, we've talked in here a lot about uh, in the Bible that names have real strong meaning. And but you know, it's not just in the church. It's not just uh, uh, people who read the Bible. It, it, have you noticed that name change things are all over the news right now? Like, uh, came out again uh, this week that uh, the more pressure to change the name of the Redskins, and as a part of the Cherokee Nation, you know, I'm not. A, I don't care, but um, <laughs> I don't support Washington anyway. So, uh, but um, then I heard that the Seahawks are changing their name next week. They want to change it to Champions. <laughs> I, I, that's, I was joking. <laughs> but, uh, but okay, so I look back on some of this. There's some history here. For example, um, uh, Anderson Consulting spent $175 million to change their name to Accenture. Boy, that made a difference. Uh, <laughs> Bell Atlantic, you know, kind of solid phone company, changed their name to Verizon. What the heck is Verizon? Nobody will remember that. Yeah. Uh, and uh, Google now is Alphabet. I learned that because I Googled it. Okay? I Googled it and found out they're no longer Google. Now I have to alphabet it. Oh man, that's going to be hard. Um, and then this week, uh, uh, the ISIS Pharmaceuticals. <laughs> <laughs> Whoever saw this coming? I never thought they'd consider. The CEO wow. went on record a couple of weeks ago, we will never change our name. We are ISIS. <laughs> So, yesterday, <laughs> they're changing it to Iona. <laughs> yeah, sales dropped off there with that ISIS thing. But, you know, names mean something, don't they? And, and it's really striking to me that here in the very beginning of the Gospels, uh, we hear about the power in the name, and it's very specific that uh, you will call him Jesus. That'll be his name. Uh, for he will save his people from their sins. So if you look back on that, you say, okay, what, how do you get that? Well, uh, Jesus obviously is the um, anglicized way, but um, it comes from uh, uh, Yesu in the Greek New Testament, which comes from Hebrew, Yeshua, which is Joshua. Right? And uh, it means God saves. So it's very appropriate. You, know, you will name this child God saves. Um, but you know how names get shortened? You know, William becomes Bill, and uh, Dorothy becomes Dottie, or sometimes Dot. They do really get short. And uh, Jonathan becomes John, and then John becomes Jack, and then Jack becomes Ian. As like, <laughs> we're losing letters, right? Uh, but, so actually, Yeshua, God saves, is a shortened nickname version of the Hebrew um, Yehosha, Yehoshua, which means God himself saves. Isn't that cool? God himself saves. 
You're going to name this kid God himself saves. It's a, salvation doesn't come from us. It doesn't come from each other. It doesn't come from good intentions. It doesn't come anywhere but God himself. And, and that's the radical nature of, uh, of, as we go towards Christmas, this Advent season, that we're preparing ourselves for God himself to break in in a radical way uh, and do something in our lives and in our community and in our world. God himself is going to break down here. And uh, that's, that's not always comes across as good news. Um, it, it has a feeling a little bit, depending on how you grew up. You know, I, I didn't grow up well. But, um, some say I haven't grown up, but I just got older. <laughs> but, um, you know, that, that idea of, you know, you wait till your dad gets home. Your dad's coming home. You know, uh, in our home, that really was scary. Okay, that was, that was but, um, but there are four of us, so sometimes there's a pretty good chance he hit the wrong ones. <laughs> so just stay low. But, um, but this idea that God himself saves us and is, is coming into our world in a radical way. I find that kind of exciting. I find that um, I'm ready for something radical to happen, something basic, something essential, something that, that uh, changes me at the core, that, that, that changes all of us in a real foundational way. And, and that's, what, uh, that's what Christmas is. Um, now, if, if Jesus is going to save us from our sins, Got me think. What what do we need to be saved from? What 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 do we want to be saved from? Um, think about that for a minute. Uh, I thought of it and went, you know, I really don't want Jesus to save me from my sins. Uh, thank you very much. What I would prefer is that He would save me from your sins. <laughs> Really, honestly, you know, if 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 uh, if he could do something to sort of give me a barrier around other people so that their sins don't impact me, wouldn't that be great? I could just kind of, you know, live my life unimpacted by y'all or they all, <laughs> any all. But um, but. The Bible tells us specifically not he's going to save you from sinners. No. Um, he's not going to save you from the effects of what those sinners do in their sin. He's going to save what? Who? Yeah, it's, it's us. I said that. To, to save us from our sin, not from others. Um, it's ours that needs Jesus to break into our world in a radical way. Um, you've heard me talk about, you know, uh, the old saying, you know, uh, love the sinner, hate the sin. You know, that was something I kind of grew up on. You know, it didn't make me sense, but that, I always said it. I'm going to love the sinner and hate the sin. And then I realized, no, actually, what, the, what God wants us to do is um, love the sinner and hate your own damn sin. <laughs> you know, all right. Right. sorry. <laughs> sorry, didn't mean you. Uh, you know, but isn't that really what it is? He's coming to save us from our sin. It's our issue. It's our wanting to take control of our life. It's our wanting to establish ourselves on our terms. It's our wanting to be God. It's our wanting to uh, be the decider, the creator. It's our wanting to be the rescuer. Sometimes it's our, our, our thing. And and Jesus wants to break into our world and save us from ourselves. Isn't that something? And from all our tendency to want to uh, fix it and make our life <laughs> what it should be, and. Uh, and puts the control right back on the Lord. If he's going to be Lord of our life, then we, by definition, aren't going to be. So the good news today is, there is a God. It's not you. Or me. You know, but, um, he will save us from our sin. 
Now, the idea of salvation in the Bible is it, it's consistent. It goes all the way through Psalm 38. Salvation is the Lord's. It was never meant to be something that we put together. Jonah 2, deliverance belongs to the Lord. Um, Psalm 130, the Lord will redeem Israel from all its iniquities. Um, it consistently moves through. And then we see the fulfillment in, you'll, you'll give us the name Jesus. You'll name this child Jesus because he's going to save his people from their sins. He's going to do what uh, all through Scripture to that point had been pointing to. And then, it's, this is kind of confusing to me early on, but it says, and then you're going to name him Jesus. God himself saves. But then everybody's going to call him a nickname. They're all going to call him Emmanuel, which means God with us. It's two Hebrew words, Emmanuel, uh, which means among us, with us, and El, which is short for Elohim, which was the Hebrew name for God. And so it's uh, with us, God. Among us, God. That's what people are going to call him. His name is God himself says, and everybody's got the nickname, why don't you, God's among us. Now, This brings up the whole issue of uh, if Christmas happens this year, if if Jesus is born anew in the manger and uh, that we've been looking for, and we're going to celebrate our Christmas Eve, and uh, God actually breaks into our world in a radical way this year and is among us, we're going to experience something that sometimes because of our defenses or barriers or complications in our life or whatever, we start to miss, and that is the presence of God. If it says that God's with us, that means he is present in our life, in our relationships, in our work, in our play, in our worship. It's God is present. And um, sometimes, maybe because of just the way our lives are structured, it's easy for us to overlook the presence of God. We think, well, God's, you know, God's up there. Why does God care if we wave? I don't know what that is. You know? <laughs> or if you're a football player, you have to point. Like, <laughs> look, he's there. <laughs> Nobody in the stadium ever looks up at that point. You notice that? <laughs> Even watching TV, I look up. <laughs> but, you know, there most of the uh, religions in the world love a distant God. Isn't that amazing? Uh, uh, followers of Islam, uh, you know, the, they, they believe that God is so holy and so powerful and so uh, beloved that he would never be among us. Sometimes I struggle to be among us, but, you know, but their idea is that that would be Unthinkable that God would, would condescend to be with people. That's, it's, it's against his own nature. And we've talked about Beth Midler singing from a distance. God's watching you from a distance. That made me look out of the window a few times. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, have you ever noticed that people who don't understand the presence of God really hope that God is distant? Why? Why is it so important that we maintain this, this our personal space with the Creator? Why is that so important? Maybe it's because if God is present, if it's really God himself saves God among us, that changes everything. It really does. Um, it changes the whole dynamic of our life. It changes the way uh, we prioritize. It, it changes the way we, we go out and get involved in, in the world and in uh, 
It will serve us. It, it changes the way we worship. I remember years, years, and years ago, when I was over at the University Press, uh, the chaplain of the U.S. Senate came uh, because his uh, niece uh, was my secretary, and she was getting married, so he was coming out to do the, uh, the wedding, and so we had to preach in church. And between services, we, we all kind of gathered, the pastors uh, together, and he came in after preaching and went, "Wow, I can't wait till we get to heaven and be with the Lord." And my boss, Bruce Larson, went, "What are you talking about? He's already here." <laughs> and all of a sudden, the chaplain of the Senate went, oh, Yeah, yeah, that's right. I, 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 what was I thinking? <laughs> but we do get this idea of, you know, someday in heaven, you know, we'll be with the Lord. And, uh, you know, they're now with the Lord. Well, they've been with them already. If, this is a famous quote If you don't like now, you're going to hate heaven. Because the presence of God is already here. And we may try and block it and push it away and uh, keep God distant, but he is present with us. That's the, that's the promise of Christmas, isn't it? God with us. Um, now think about what that means. For example, has anybody ever tried to do something and you felt kind of powerless to make it all work? Has that ever happened to you? <laughs> no? <laughs> Only the people on this side. <laughs> These people are the achievers. <laughs> I, am I alone with this thing of, you know, sometimes you just feel like you don't have whatever it takes. That, even if it's a good thing, even if you feel like, you know, God, God wants us to do this, you know, and so I want to really try to do it. And fumble, 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 fumble. <laughs> Corey Tenboom went uh, so, Survivor of death camps in World War II, and then um, became a pretty volatile writer. But what she said was, when we are powerless to do a thing, it is a great joy that we can come and step inside the ability of Jesus. Isn't that a great picture? We can step inside the ability of Jesus. It's not left up to us. And, and he's not distant from us. He's available. The availability of the Savior. And, and you know, I've got to think about that because so many times uh, we get discouraged because we feel that we, maybe we have a dream to do some great thing or some minimal thing, but, but it's still a great dream. And then we find resistance and things aren't working and it's all falling apart and, and we go, well, give up on that. But we have the option of stepping inside the abilities of Jesus, who brings, if he calls us to do something, he will provide the means to do it. He doesn't say, he doesn't call you uh, to a great mission and then say, okay, you're on your own. Let me know what it's like when you get to heaven. You know, it's like, no, no, if I'm calling you to do it, I'll give you everything you need for that to happen. The problem is we don't necessarily believe it, and so we don't ask, or we don't look for, or we don't pick up the resources that he has all around us. He's not withholding them. He's not saying, okay, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to give you all the tools you need to build what you're going to build, and, and, but I'm going to hide them. <laughs> and you'll spend the rest of your life trying to find them. And by then it'll be too late. Ha <laughs> ha. What kind of God is that? More like the people I grew up with, you know, but um, he doesn't do that. It, it's not a mystery. He, he wants to be among us, and everything that he has is available for his people. That should be really a source of joy. Now, we may choose not to uh, access his resources, we may choose to ignore his presence. We could do a lot of things. Or we could say, yes, okay, all right, I'll stop fighting you, Lord. Uh, have your way in me. Wouldn't that be a radical prayer? Have your way in me. As long as you're here and I'm not going to be able to get away from you,
How about you surround me, cover me, support me, guide me, correct me, encourage me, strengthen me. Lord Jesus. And every time, every time we, we say the name Jesus, the power of God among us is available. And every time we hear the name Jesus, we're reminded that we are not alone. And every time we hope that the name of Jesus matters, we discover his strength and his protection and his healing. Wouldn't that be amazing in our lives? Wouldn't it? This is so different from, uh, uh, you know, some of us are way over-educated, and, uh, and there's a tendency uh, among religious folk, of all religions, really, but uh, among religious folk to, to uh, kind of value, you know, we're going our, our to find God somehow. And I, I came across this great uh, C.S. Lewis insight. He, he called himself a lapsed agnostic. <laughs> and, uh, I don't know if that meant that he was hopeful that he'd go back to the world. <laughs> he was a lapsed agnostic. He said, I was allowed to play with philosophy no longer. My argument sank into utter unimportance. He, God among us, would not argue about it. He wouldn't argue about it. You know, can you imagine that? You bring all your arguments to, to God philosophically and he doesn't respond at all. Totally unimpressed. Uh, he only said, I am the Lord. I am with you always. That's all he said. Then he says, people who are naturally religious find difficulty in understanding the horror of such a revelation. <laughs> I am the Lord. I am with you always. That's horrifying, if you understand it. Amiable agnostics, like I was, will talk cheerfully about man's search for God. To me, as I was then, they might as well have talked about the mouse's search for the cow. <laughs> because what happens if you catch him? What happens if you catch him? The Lord, who is among us, the God who saves himself. He himself saves us. What happens if we just man search for What happens if we discover this God? Let's scare the stew out of me. I, yeah, you too. <laughs> that was an amen if I ever heard one. <laughs> it's as close to one as we get in this place. But, uh, you know, the thing is, I think Christmas could be a shatteringly horrific experience for most people if they understood it a little bit. If they understood it a little bit more, it could be life-giving and life-changing. There's something about the name. You had to sing that today. There's something about the name. Jesus. God himself saves and we'll nickname him Emmanuel, God among us. No, no distance, no place to hide. That's what I want for you this Christmas. That's what I want for me this Christmas. I want him to break into our lives in a radical way. And radical doesn't mean unloving, you know. Shock us with his love. Horrify us with his grace. Pray with you. Lord Jesus, we thank you that you uh, enter our world and you enter our lives. And so once again, we ask that you would come in. And we won't push you away. We won't flee and we won't uh, put up our barriers. Come in to us and uh, have your way with us. Transform us, encourage us, heal us. Strengthen us, guide us, according to your ways. And we'll, we'll give you the glory. And we're praying this in the strong name of Jesus. Amen. Amen. Amen.